the next question is the people, uh, it, it's a, uh, uh, we have been told to pray with gaps uh, by the government. The people who pray with gaps in the masjid, uh, would their prayers be accepted? Me and my friends just pray feet to feet behind them, forming another line. Is that okay? Wallahi, akhi, it is something that is current and new, which means that it was never done at the time of the Prophet Sam or the companions or the tabi'een or tabi'in tabi'in. So it's an, a, a, a recent issue. And in Arabic, in fiqh, they call it nazila, something descending. It's a problem. It's a calamity that came down. It was unprecedented. So the scholars must sit and, and, and discuss it. To my knowledge, the major scholars council did not come with a verdict on it. But the major scholars of Saudi Arabia individually, three or four of them said it is permissible, such as Sheikh Turki bin Saad al Khathlan, uh, Sheikh, uh, I think, Saad uh, al Shifri, Sheikh uh, Suleiman al Rahaili, uh, maybe one more. They said it's okay because it's a necessity and praying in the masjid with gaps is better than not praying in the masjid at all so that we cannot abandon the masjids and leave them empty. Now, this is their concept, which is respected. I do not have the authority to tell people, no, 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 this is not a valid fatwa because these guys are major scholars. I'm not. And they have the knowledge to give fatwas and they have the authority and they have the responsibility to face Allah Azza wa Jal. You cannot expect any Tom, Dick, or Harry to come and say, no, 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 this is not a valid fatwa. Pray shoulder to shoulder, foot to foot. And if you guys all die, inshallah, you'll be martyrs. No, this is irresponsible. However, if a person was chronically ill, someone who's diabetic or high blood pressure or has heart problems or kidney problems, and doctors all say you should not pray in the masjid, Okay, this is one exemption. You have to pray home. Or if you're afraid that you will catch this virus to the extent that you don't go to work, you don't go to school, you're confined to your home because you're truly scared of it. This is a legitimate reason. Or if you have a sore throat or you cough a lot, you have a fever, this is a legitimate reason not to go and it is haram for you to go. But if you go and do shopping and go to the malls and buy groceries and mix with people, I, I saw a beautiful picture showing five people praying with social distancing in the desert. They went camping. So there is a meter and a half between each one of them. The funny thing is that they came in one car. So this is ridiculous. You drove two hours in the same car. And now when it comes to prayer, is this social distancing? Besides, this virus is not a plague. It is not smallpox. It is not an illness that spreads in five or six days and kills like millions. It's a flu, but on steroids. So the problem is that it's normal flu, 80 80% of the people affected by it, they recover without even needing any medical attention. They just quarantine themselves home three, four days and they're good to go. So if someone believes this and he believes that it is not a real necessity that mandates leaving a gap and he feels that when he goes to the masjid that I don't feel like praying. It's my own prayer mat. It's my own face mask. And there's no one in front of me or behind me or beside me. What am I doing? And he believes that, no, this is not a thing that is following the right way of the sunnah. And he decides to pray home. I believe that there is nothing wrong in praying home. And Allah Azza wa knows best. But 
When it comes to Friday, Friday is a different story. Friday, we know that missing three consecutive Fridays would put a seal on your heart. So even if there's social distancing, Akhi, pray Friday and ask Allah for forgiveness for what is happening because you don't do this with your own will, but it is enforced upon us and Allah knows best.